Hello friends, in this lecture we are going to learn the most important and most effective, most efficient method of getting initial solution of a transportation problem that is Vogel's approximation method, VAM, popularly known as VAM. In Vogel's approximation method, we make allocation not on the basis of any geographical location, not on the basis of directly selecting the cell with the least cost, but on the basis of the penalty or say opportunity cost. For this purpose, first we have to calculate penalty for each and every row and column. Now what is penalty? Penalty is the difference between the least cost and immediate higher cost of a row or column. Penalty is the difference between the least cost and the immediate higher cost of any row or column. That is penalty. For each and every row and column, first we have to calculate penalty. Then out of all the columns and rows, we have to select a row or column with the highest penalty. A row or column with the highest penalty is selected. And then in the selected row or column, the cell with the lowest cost is selected. And in that cell, the allocation is made. So let us start the first trial or iteration. For first row, the least cost is 1 and the immediate higher is 2. So the penalty will be 2 minus 1. That is 1. For second row, the least cost is 1. Immediate higher is 2. Again, the penalty will be 2 minus 1. 1. See, penalty can never be negative. Because from higher the least is subtracted. Difference between the least and the immediate higher. But from the immediate higher, we subtract the least cost. So penalty can never be negative. And number two, if there is a tie or other repetition in case of the least cost, we should not calculate the penalty as one least cost minus another least cost. No, penalty can never be zero or negative. Because by definition, by definition given by Vogel, the penalty is the difference between the least cost and the immediate highest. From the immediate higher, we need to subtract the least cost. Very simple thing, but in some reference book, many a times the penalty is calculated as least minus least zero. If we calculate any penalty as zero, that row or column can never be selected. Even though that column or row contains the low cell with the lowest cost of the entire table. So mind well, never subtract the least cost for from the another least cost for any column or row. Always subtract the least cost from the immediate higher to calculate the penalty. Okay. Now for the third row, the least cost is 2, immediate higher is 4. So 4 minus 2, it comes to 2. Now the goal. In the D1 column, the least cost is 1, immediate higher is 3, so 3 minus 1, 2. In D2, the least cost is 2, immediate higher is 3, 3 minus 2, 1. Here, least cost 1, immediate higher 2, 2 minus 1, 1. Least cost 1, immediate higher 4, 4 minus 1, 3. Now what? Check whether for all columns and rows the penalty has been calculated. Yes. Now select the highest penalty or rather row or column with the highest penalty. There is only one column B4 is with the highest penalty of 3. So we have selected D3, column D3 rather. Now in B4, I am very sorry, column D4 that is with the highest penalty. So, we have selected D4. Now, in D4, which is the cell with the lowest cost? The cell with the lowest cost is this one. Lowest cost, only one. So, this cell is selected. Now, we need to make allocation in this cell. Demand 10, 
supply 50, whichever is your own. Okay. So demand of D4 is exhausted and supply of 50 was available, only 10 allocation made, so 40 is still available. But since the demand of D4 is exhausted, we need to cancel column D4. We need not find the penalty for D4 now onwards because D4 cancel column. Now again, next round of calculation of penalty for remaining columns and rows. Again, we will select the highest penalty and so on. The same step will be repeated till the whole supply of 100 is exhausted and total demand of 100 is satisfied. So next round, again for the remaining cells, the least cost in S1 row is 1 and immediate IR is 2. So penalty comes to 1. In this case, see now the penalty is least cost 2 because this cell cannot be considered. Immediate IR is 3, 3 minus 2, it comes to 1. In row S3, the least cost is 2, immediate IR is 4, 4 minus 2, penalty 2. Next, column D1, the least cost is 1, immediate IR is 3, 3 minus 1, penalty comes to 2. D2, least cost 2, immediate IR 3, 3 minus 2, 1. In D3, least cost is 1, immediate IR 2, 2 minus 1, 1. Now, the penalties are 1 and 2 only. We have a column with penalty of 2 and a row with penalty of 2. That means there is tie between row S3 and column D1. Now, what should be used as tiebreaker? The cell with the lowest cost should be used as tiebreaker. In this row, the least cost is 2. If we make any allocation in this row, it will be made in this cell with cost 2. If we make any allocation in this column, which will be the cell with allocation? This one, with the least cost, 1. So, where is the least cost? 1. If this row is selected, least cost is 2. If this column is selected, least cost is 1. Again, remember our objective is to minimize the cost. So, we should select the cell with the lowest cost. So, to select this cell, we have to select column D1 and we have to ignore row S3. So, we are going to select column D1 instead of row S3. I am going to repeat the tiebreaker. We have tie between the one row and one column having the same highest penalty of 2. If we make allocation in this column, the lowest cost cell is with rupee 1. If we make allocation in this row, the cell with the lowest cost is with cost of 2. Tiebreaker is the least cost. So, to select the cell with the least cost, we have to select the column with that cell. Okay? Now we are going to make allocation in this cell. Demand 20. Supply 30, whichever is lower, 20. Demand of D1 is satisfied. Supply from S1 available 30, allocated 20, 10 is still available. But with this allocation, we have to cancel column D1 because the demand is exhausted. Now, in next trials, we will not calculate any penalty for column D1. Again, same thing, repetition of same thing. For the remaining part of the table, let us calculate the penalty, third trial or third item already. Least cost of the open table, 1, immediate higher 2, again penalty comes to 1. Least cost 2, immediate higher 3, 2 minus 1, 3 minus 2, 1. S3, least cost 2, immediate IR 5, 5 minus 2, 3. Column D2, least cost is 2, immediate IR is 3, 3 minus 2 comes to 1. Column
column D3, least cost is 1, immediate error 2, 2 minus 1, penalty comes to 1. Simple selection, the highest penalty is 3 for row S3. So easily we can select or rather we ought to select row S3. In row S3, the empty cell with the lowest cost is 2. So let us make allocation in this cell. Demand 40, supply 20, whichever is lower, 20. So we have to make allocation of 20. Supply exhausted, but unsatisfied demand of 20 is still there. So we have to cancel the row of S3. And now onwards, we will not calculate any penalty for row of S3. Next trial, only these two columns and these two rows, first row, least cost 1, immediate error 2, penalty will be 2 minus 1, 1. Second row, least cost 2, immediate error 3, 3 minus 2, penalty comes to 1. D2, least cost 2, immediate error 3, 3 minus 2, 1. D3, least cost 1, immediate error 2, penalty again comes to 1. There is a tie among all four, two rows and two columns. Let us check if this row is selected, the cell with least cost is cell with 1. This cell should be selected, so least cost comes to 1. In this case, least cost comes to 2, so we are not going to select S2. In this column also, least cost is 2, that is higher than least cost of 1, so we are not going to select D2. In this column, the same cell with least cost of 1 is there, so we can select either row S1 or column D3. Now it should be selected. The same cell is there, so there is no confusion, because in this cell if we make a location of units, it will be demand 30, supply 10, whichever is lower 10. So even if we select row, the same cell is selected or column, the same cell is selected. So there is no need of tiebreaker type of situation. But we can in our own say that we have selected either row S1 or column D3. The same cell is selected. So let us make allocation. Demand 30. Supply 10. Whichever is lower, so 10, supply of S1 exhausted, demand of D3 still 20 units, demand unsatisfied, but we have to cancel the row S1. Now, using the common sense, we should not calculate any penalty because we have only one row and two columns with empty cells, just using common sense, our aim is, objective is to minimize the cost, let us select the cell with the lowest cost out of these two first, so it comes to here, two, let us make allocation, demand 20 or supply 40, whichever is lower, it comes to 20, so demand of D3 is now satisfied, supply of 20 is available from S2, let us cancel. D3. Now only one cell is outstanding. Demand 20, supply 20. So we can allocate 20 units and let us keep it open. That was the end point of the solution. So this was Vogel's approximation method. Let us count the number of cells with allocation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. M rows 3, N columns 4, M plus N 7 minus 1, 6. To get the feasible solution, to have the feasible solution, we should follow or rather the solution should satisfy the M plus N minus 1 rule. This solution satisfies the M plus N minus 1 rule. So we can say that this is the feasible solution. But the question of optimality is not say I am not going to raise that at this time. But let us calculate the cost. Units multiplied by cost per 
per unit the result is total cost units 20 at the cost of rupee 1 total cost 20 units 10 at the cost of rupee 1 total cost 10 units 20 at the cost of rupees 3 60 units 20 at the cost of rupees 240 units 10 at the cost of rupee 1 10 units 20 at the cost of rupees 240 6 allocations 30 plus 60 90 plus 40 130 140 total comes to 180 the same 100 units can be transported to their respective destinations at a total cost of 180 rupees. Remember, by the northwest corner method, the initial solution of the same problem was giving hello, transportation of 100 units at the cost of rupees at the cost of rupees 310. By least cost method, the cost was rupees 200, and by VAM or Vogel's approximation method. The cost comes to 180. The same problem we solved by all the three methods. So we can arrive at a conclusion that Vogel's approximation method is the best among three. It reaches at the lowest possible cost or rather say very near to the optimal solution at the initial stage itself. The concept of penalty is somewhat say lengthier but it is foolproof. And my experience says that in more than 50% of solutions by VAM, we get the optimal solution directly. This is my experience. But again I am going to repeat the calculation of penalty and that step. Penalty is the difference between the least cost and the immediate higher of the row or column. First we have to write penalty for each and every row. Then we select row or column with the highest penalty. In the selected row or column we again select the cell with the lowest or least cost and allocation is made to the cell. Thank you.